In the end, it was all worth it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dele Olojele. Hey, Raja Bota. When you see school fees well spent, you can... Please give another round of applause, Larry. Thank you, Oyiko. Um, we didn't used to speak English like that when I was your age. <laughs> Growing up in Budakake. Um, for coming Thank uh, you. tonight, we sort of put this together very quickly because uh, we were dealing with a moving target uh, here. We'd shifted our dates a few times, and we finally said, ready or not, here we come. And, uh, we jumped in the uh, raging waters uh, feet first. We still haven't touched bottom yet, quite. Uh, but we thought we'll share with you very briefly what our story is. We embarked on this journey with uh, some help from lots of people. But uh, I think the story begins uh, with the kind of environment in which uh, one grew up in the 60s and 70s and how I was personally sort of lured into uh, becoming a newspaper man. Um, and of course, the Times was everything. Time. Uh, um, Jeremy, thanks for finding this out of the archives in London. It's very difficult to get uh, whole front pages of the Daily Times here. Yeah. Um, but there were a lot of great writers, a lot of great reporting, and uh, if you were you know, a, a young person in the 60s and uh, early 70s, and you love to read, then the Daily Times it was. And of course, we f fast forward to now, um, and this is what we have in our country. Uh, a lot of very interesting newspapers, quality gradually improving, um, the content still a bit of a challenge, uh, but uh, a number of things had happened since the black and white Daily Times days, and um, uh, most importantly, the uh, introduction of color. And I think it was this day that first put color on the, on the front page. And if I'm wrong, one of the newspapers did um, at any rate. A number of the newspapers that we have have had some impact uh, at various uh, periods in our industry. Um, I remember vividly when uh, we were all young reporters in Lagos in the uh, around 1980, 81 or so, and The Guardian came along and raised the bar a little bit, coming shortly after the Concord, uh, by which time The Times was beginning to have a little bit of trouble. And of course, there were always the other papers, including, of course, The Punch and uh, Uncle Sam's Vanguard. Uh, Business Day came a little bit later. The Daily Sun keeps you uh, entertained. Uh, and so we uh, move on. Of course, this period had been marked by a dramatic decline in circulation. The Daily Times used to do half a million copies a day in its time, and about 600,000 copies a day on Sunday, but things are a bit more challenging now uh, for various reasons. So we thought there was an opportunity here, but it wasn't so much because there was an opportunity to build something new just to make a change, but because we thought we had a chance to do something special here, that out of a big, chaotic, uh, in exciting country, it was possible to build something that would be world class in every respect. And so we came up with this. As of uh, tomorrow, you will be getting some, if not all, of this. You already started getting a little bit of them. Uh, we, of course, build this whole thing on very high production values, uh, on very high Material quality content on uh, contemporary design. You've got a little uh, bit from uh, Mario Garcia earlier. But more importantly, to create a news organization, one that takes information to people wherever they are, and not simply uh, through the pages uh, of dead trees. So, we set about designing the newspaper because we're not just big on high quality content, but also on, on design, on appearance, on aesthetics. We thought people de deserve the very best that audiences the world over are accustomed to getting. And we said, why not us? 
It's like a story I used to read to my daughters when they were very young, and we read to each other every night uh, about a jazz artist who was struggling in San Francisco. And when he tried everything and uh, failed and was very broke and kept going, and he said, if the big cats can cut it, why not me? So we say, here, yeah, why not us? Why don't we deserve to have a world-class news organization? So there is Mario uh, in uh, my apartment here in Lagos during one of his many workshops that he held here. Um, he was probably towards the end of the day there, and we were fooling around a little bit. I don't even know who took that picture. You should never show this to the public. Um, but Mario Garcia is a, a special friend. We collaborated together in New York about uh, 15 years ago when Newsday was being given a fresh, updated look. And I was on the design team in-house that was working with uh, Mario's uh, shop. Mario, the image on the right is something that came out of the front page of the Wall Street Journal because he also redesigned the Wall Street Journal about five years ago amongst uh, the London Observer's new updated look that was launched about three years ago, El Pais, uh, and Miami Herald, generally by I think about 600 news pages on every continent, and where his first assignment in sub-Saharan Africa, which is why he was very excited to do this uh, project. So we chose the name, next, called Which Comes in all manner of colors, because we figure that we are very colorful people. Uh, actually, the taste in uh, couture tonight has gone to the sedate, but uh, it's typically a lot more flamboyant than this. Um, and so we decided we were going to give people a very colorful presentation. That was the very first sketch that Mario drew in my living room. Uh, in May, the beginning, the first week of May, I think it was when we had our first design workshop. And I have that frame now hanging in the office somewhere. Um, and we also wanted to uh, build a newsroom that is capable of doing all these things from scratch. So we were not looking for newspaper reporters. We were looking for people who are comfortable operating in all media, and we were going to train them to do that. So we have a lot of young people. We have a number of uh, older people uh, and put them all together in one great pot. And we have all been training uh, one another and sharing the experience and bringing people in from all over the world to help us uh, to do that. The young lady you see there, she's only 17 years old. Um, I hope this is not uh, child labor uh, exposure that we face. Uh, She's a very interesting young woman. I think she's here somewhere. Uh, somebody found her in their church. <laughs> well, there she is, Queen. Thank you, Queen. Um, she wants to study film, and because the film school in New York would not yet admit her because she's not 18 yet, so she's spending the next year with us, and when she turns 18, she's off to New York. But uh, Queen was discovered in our church by one of our staff members, and she's very adept with the camera and runs a blog and does all these fancy things. And our approach to building our staff is to look for talent wherever we get it, whether people are 17 years old or 70 years old. Of course, we found that the 70-year-olds are particularly difficult to train. Um, so we had 13,000 applicants uh, for our first recruitment drive to hire and train young people to become journalists. We were looking for mathematicians and philosophers and uh, English majors and engineering graduates and uh, graduates in the law and any manner of professions. And, uh,